Hello! This is going to be a video about how to earn rubies doing daily quests in Arcane Online. Arcane Online is an MMO game played on your mobile phone. It uses a freemium model where it's free to play with a premium currency, but thankfully you can earn up to $3.25 worth of that premium currency. That's 130 rubies every day just by doing some simple daily quests. In the top right in the, this banner here, you will see the flag that says dailies. This has all the different daily quests. These reset during the middle of the night the, on your server. And as you complete them, you will get points towards these rewards along the bottom. Each of these rewards are cumulative, so if you earn 150 points, you will earn them all, including the 125 and 5 rubies. The good news is most of these are pretty free and cheap to do, so let's get started. I'm going to do these starting with the ones that I think are easiest or cheapest in regards to in-game resources to accomplish. So going to activities, that's the shield right up top in the left end of the banner where we found dailies. We're going to start in the bottom left with Abyss Chest. A certain number of times a day for free, you can send a creature to get you a chest from the Abyss. So we're going to hit start in the middle. It will randomly roll us a creature. It rolled the Seahorse, which is the weakest one, so I'm going to hit the bottom left button to re-roll that. We'll accept a Sea Turtle. We press Dispatch in order to uh, send it off on its way. And it can be carrying its chest while we do other things. Other people will plunder it, which is fine because they'll only steal gold and experience. We're guaranteed to get the seed packet and the treasure mine ticket, which is what we're really after to do our dailies. Now you can also tap these other creatures and plunder a certain number of them per day. You need to look for somebody who is within nine levels of you has not been plundered twice yet, and is less power than you, because we only get the daily reward for three plunders if we win. So this should work fine for me, so I'm going to hit the plunder button. Just like an arena battle, which we will get to later, it will automatically run a fight. I don't have to touch the screen or do anything. And if you do this three times, you will finish another daily. Plus, earn some gold and experience. If guys are piled on top of each other, like in the bottom right corner here, and you can't tap them, you can just press refresh, which not only brings in any new creatures that have appeared, but reshuffles the ones that were there, so you can maybe tap on ones that you couldn't before. If you can't find anybody that you can successfully plunder, come back later. So, the quest actually will trigger when you send out the creature instead of when you actually collect it, despite the wording. So, it's going to reward us with 10,000 gold and 5 points. Note that the points are added to your points total even before you claim the chest, the uh, quest. For plundering three abyss chests, we get five points and three red crystals for upgrading. Now we'll go back to the activity section. Right to the right of the abyss chest is my farm. Now if we need to farm or harvest three times. Some of these uh, activities may not be available to you until you're level 30 or 35. But 35 is the point at which most of these have opened up and it's really easy to complete your dailies. We only really need two seed packets because both planting a seed and harvesting it count toward our three activities. And we should get plenty of seed packets from our abyss chests. If you just sow all, it will fill in all of your fields. The trees will grow for 30 minutes and then be available to harvest for full value for one hour. After that total of an hour and a half, you can still harvest them, but it's something like a tenth of what you could have gotten from them. 
and we will close that and we'll see that we finished another daily, which gives us a seed packet and five points. Next is the treasure mine. Go back to activities. On the bottom right, you'll see the treasure mine. We get tickets for this from the abyss chests. It's a random spin that will give us some sort of reward. And it's free to do other than the tickets, which we got for free from the abyss chests anyway. Next up will be the Giants. In the event section, the second thing along your ribbon that looks like a present, you'll see several different giant dens. You can enter them and fight the giants to get treasure of some sort. After a few moments, the giants will appear. They're very simple to beat, which is why I just turned off all of my skills that would use mana in my auto hunt. And you can easily farm them for the gold that they drop when you kill them, as well as the materials that you get when you finish. Note that it just says enter the giant den for the quest. You don't actually have to complete it. So in a move that's going to make some people's brain hurt, if you touch this um, up in the very top right home button, looks like a little house, you can leave the giant's den. I'd already been through it two other times, so that third visit to one completes the daily. Now I get five points and a ticket for the treasure mine, and five points and a teleportation scroll for the giant den. Back to our activities. Next, will be the Temple of Trials. This is along the top row, you'll see the third one here looks like an angel statue. You'll get three free entries a day, more if you have a higher VIP level. You can hit solo play or group finder, which we'll talk more about later. This is another one that you just have to enter. So you can fight it for rewards, but if you don't want to because you don't have time, after a few moments, our friendly home button will reappear, and we can just exit. That was my third visit for the day, so I get a stack of dungeon seals and five points. Next in activities, we have the arena right here, the second from the left in the top row. This auto battles you against other players in the game. So you don't have to do anything except just hit the fight button. To finish the daily quest, you have to do 10 arena fights in a day, which is exactly how many you have if you haven't spent any money on the game. You do not have to win. You just have to participate. So all you have to do is hit the button, let your guy fight, when it finishes one fight, unless you hit the stop refight button, it will automatically start the next one. This does not use any of your potions or other materials. And you can either watch the fight happen or set the phone off to the side and go do something else. Once you've finished 10 battles, you can leave. You get another red crystal and five points. Next up, we're going to go back into events for a moment. Down towards the bottom, you will find the Rebel Hideout. This is a special little dungeon, which you can normally enter one time a day if you don't have VIP. And it's just filled with endlessly spawning monsters on level for you that have pretty good gold and potion drops, as well as experience. 
but this is yet another one where we just have to enter. So if you're in a hurry, you can hit the home button to escape the rebel hideout. It will show you a summary of what you earned, not counting any potion drops. And we can see that we've now earned five points and a guardian angel, which is a free resurrection. We've also earned this chest on the bottom row, which we do have to tap in order to claim. We've also finished a quest with Flora, where she will give us golden experience. This next batch of quests requires you to be in a guild. It's very easy to do, but you do need a guild. Guild is the bottom left of all of your options in the character screen. If you don't have a guild, you can go to the list and find a friendly one. Even if you have to start one yourself, which you shouldn't because many are always accepting. But if you don't want the pressure, there are lots of very, or uh, you don't want to play with other people because you're a loner. You can either start your own or join one of the many little low-level guilds of people who have done the same if they are still active and will invite you. Joining a guild is well worth doing because of the following things that we can do. For attendance, we can check and hit check in for the guild. Just by hitting a couple of buttons, we have finished a daily quest. We're going to get 10,000 gold and five points. Going back to our guild screen, next you can worship at the guild. This helps the guild level up, and it gives you experience, gold, and guild honor. And all you have to do is tap the button. Next, we will look at the guild shop. In the left list, you will see that the third one down says guild shop. We can use that spiffy 25 guild honor we just got to buy a flawed gem chest, the second on the list, which will fulfill a daily to buy something in the guild shop. Most of your honor, if you're in an active guild, should typically be donated to guild perks. But most guilds are perfectly fine with you using a little bit in the shop for yourself. Now that we've done those two things, we can go to daily and see that for worshipping the guild we get 10,000 gold and 5 points. For buying in the guild shop, we get 1,000 gold and 5 points. Of course, the guild also has the guild quests. We can hit this quest button right here. Hit accept. You can have up to 10 guild quests that will feed you in order. Several of the quests are just listening to them talk about the guild or our fetch quests to run back and forth between people. And they'll give you gold experience, and in a few moments, we'll finish them and have a daily. You'll also receive these notices right above the chat when your abyss chest is delivered. If you don't want to actually run to the person for the guild quest, you can actually just tap their quest bit over on the sidebar in the quest log. And some of the guild quests that aren't fetch quests will have you go kill some monsters, which are usually going to be fairly easy for your level. I'm going to move up here so I'm not feeling that, that other player's kills. Well, looks like there's another player here. finished. Now they'll keep giving me more guild quests, but we've done four, which is enough for the daily. I'll come back and finish the others later. This will give us the extra bag and five points. We've also now done enough to collect the second chest, because we've hit 60 points altogether, which also means we can collect a quest reward from Flora.
Next is the Siege Dungeon. Once you're in a guild back in events, you will see at the very top we have this Siege Dungeon, which you can enter up to five times a day to earn points for the guild. You can enter in a group. And it is an excellent place to farm for like potions and on-level enemies. However, this is another one that just says enter. So if you don't wish to, you can hit the home button. If your guild is trying to collect siege points for the guild war, please do not do that. However, just having entered it five times, even if you just enter and leave, gets you a red crystal and five points. Next up is Wanted Quests. On your uh, scrollable quest log or any bulletin board in town, you can tap the Daily Do Wanted Quest to talk to the bulletin board. It will give you a list of several different quests to hunt monsters on or around your level. You have one daily for completing one of them and another for completing a total of two. So even though the daily wanted quests bit says zero of three, you can complete all your actual daily quests for rubies by just doing two of them. So I'm going to take a break there for a moment while I go run off and kill some demons. Back in a few minutes. Okay, we've finished our hunting. We will talk to the bulletin board to get our reward. It will try to send us off in the next quest, but we want to stay right here. We go up into dailies, we see that we've gotten several fast healing potions, and another 10 points between the two different wanted quest dailies. Next, let's talk about dungeons. If we come to the dungeon button, the fourth from the left in our ribbon at the top, we see that we have a certain number of seals, these silver star looking things here, that get us 20 more for free to up to our maximum four times a day. We get one daily quest is to run 10 normal dungeons. Now this might look like it costs a total of 20 seals, excuse me, five normal dungeons. But five normal dungeons times four is 20 seals but we'll get another stack of 10 for our inventory as the quest reward. Now, if you're saving your seals for something else, you're trying to finish your elite set, you may not want to do this one. You may want to do one of the ones I'll discuss later, but otherwise it's really easy because you can just take the lowest level dungeon, Dark Cloud Mountain, hit solo play, turn off anything that's gonna spend your mana if you don't need to, and just power through it. On the dungeon quests for normal, elite, and hell, it does require you to clear the dungeon. So just entering and then hitting the home button won't do it for you. But pretty easily, you should be able to just clear through here. And it will give you possibly crafting materials or gear that you can break down for crafting materials, if nothing else. As I said, one stack of 10 dungeon seals and 10 points. Next, elite dungeons, which is probably what you should be doing most of to finish your set. We can come over to Elite. This is where you will want to group. You have to clear three Elite Dungeons. You can work on the one for your set, or if you're in a hurry or are caught up on your current set of gear right now, you can just run Lost Temple. Hit Group Play. It will use the Group Finder. Since you're clearing three Elite Dungeons, you'll be using the Group Finder three times, which is another daily quest. If there is nobody else that wants to join this group with you, it will fill in your group with mercenaries. 
which is basically robots playing the ghosts of other players. So we'll wait for that to count down. If you're not high enough level to just tear through the dungeon and you get a terrible set of mercenaries, like if you were level 20 and you got mercenaries who were also level 20, you can, can hit the cancel button over here, hit the group finder again. It won't spend your seals until you actually enter the dungeon. So you can essentially re-roll your random mercenaries. We're gonna hit enter. We'll tear right through here. Legendary gear that you get from the designs from these elite dungeons is pretty much about the best you can have. And each set requires the set before it. So, like, the next chest piece will require the chest piece from this dungeon as one of the components for the craft. If you are having trouble finishing a set, do not sell or dump any designs you do not need. Because there is a spot in the crafting where, that I will show you later where you can combine five uh, designs of a set, so like five chaos designs, into any one design. So you can take five chaos orb designs and make a chaos band design. You'll notice we've now getting a one hour double XP buff to go into our inventory and 10 points. We also have crossed the 90.1, looks like after the last quest. So we will collect our five rubies. We can also go down to community because we've cleared three elite dungeons. We've used the group finder three times. So there's 10,000 gold and five points. Now, if you've been following along with me so far, we can grab our reward from Flora. You have 100 points and at least 41,000 gold just from the quest rewards, not in any way counting all of the gold that you got for actually doing all of these activities. So that gives us some money to go into the next round of activities that does require a little bit of endgame gold. We're going to start off with the raid boss. If we go to activities, the last one in the top row is Raid Boss. This lets you hire three other mercenaries to go against a giant boss where you don't have all of your normal abilities. Each Every person only has one offense and one defensive ability. You get up to three entries a day, which is how many you have to do to complete the quest. They drop materials for avatars. Note, all bosses drop both designs and seals, even though it shows seals for one and designs for another. So if you want to complete Volcano Avatars, you just have to keep running the Volcano boss over and over until you get the seals and designs that you're looking for. You hit Recruit. It will randomly pull some mercenaries. You're looking for a lot of power to make this easy. If you do not get any super high-powered mercenaries, you can just hit the X in the top right button and hit Recruit again, and you will get a different random set of mercenaries. That's not very good. Note, it recommends at least 20,000 power for this boss. But since people run this boss looking for avatars, if you just look for mercenaries a few times, you're bound to find some that you can get with higher power. A set of mercenaries powerful enough to take down the boss super easily will cost you between five and six thousand gold. So all over, this should cost you between fifteen and eighteen thousand gold. You hit enter. Everybody based on their class will have an offensive ability on the left and a defensive ability on the right. By just grabbing overpowered mercenaries, you can just hit all of the offensive abilities. Wait for them to recharge, if necessary. And we're done. No avatar materials this time, but you'll notice we got some special crystals and leather that we need to craft avatars and other items, as well as a bunch of potions, gold, and experience. 
plus a fast healing potion and 10 points. Next is going to be Fusion. We're going to go into the character menu by clicking on our portrait. We'll go into crafting the anvil. We need to fuse at least three items by taking sets of three to make them into the next powerful thing. Now, odds are good that you have enough gems to do this. We just have to pick three different sets that we have at least three of and fuse them up. This is especially true if you've been running the giant's den for gems every day. If you don't have enough gems, you can fuse potions. That also counts, especially these lower level potions that we got from the raid boss can be quite useful if we fuse them up. If you don't have anything that's suitable for fusing, you can go all the way back in your map, the very end here. If you go to world map, you can go to all the way back to the village of Rosin where you started. The merchant there will sell you grade one potions for seven gold apiece. Buy nine of them, fuse them into grade two. Now we get 30 blue crystals and five points. Next is going to be refining our gear. Back in the character menu, we will go into the forge. Refine. When it says to refine your gear, you only have to attempt it three times. You don't need to actually be successful. So I can take my grimoire here that's at plus 10 and just hit this refine button one, two, three times. I'm still at plus 10, but I finished my daily, netting me five points and 20 crystals. And we can collect our 25 rubies. Next, gem socketing. Back into the character menu, over to Forge. Second one down is gems. Now you just need to socket a gem. If you are not trying to improve your build currently, just have one extra socket on a piece of gear that you can put any random small gem you want into. It'll cost you just a few thousand gold to pull it out. And you can then take that same gem we pulled out and just re-socket it. The socketing is free. So as long as you keep one socket free for that, we can get a free chipped gem and five points. And talk to Flora for our tier four reward. And about now, all the stuff we planted is finally ready to harvest. So we can just hit harvest all. And we're done. The next thing that I want to talk about is dueling. If we go into events, into all events, we will see that the third one down is duel. This happens only twice a day for an hour each time. If you're not sure what time it is, you can look at the top right on the event screen and it will show you what the server time is. All of the times in the game are on server time, they're not converted to yours. So from 12 to one or seven to eight, we can come in and duel. Obviously that's a few hours away, so we'll come back later. And through the magic of video editing, it is now later. You can either go into the events menu when it's dual time, or there's a special little spot that'll show up down here above your chat. You click on it and we're in the dual window. We need to duel three players. We do not need to win. Dueling at all will rank us. And even if we're in the bottom rank, then the next day we'll be able to come into our rewards and claim three rubies. We just hit Duel Finder. It will try to match us with somebody. They might be massively more powerful than us or much weaker. We'll just see what it comes up with. Why do you call? If you want to add um, 
points to your score to increase your class, then you might use different spells and potions and care about winning. Otherwise, be sure to turn off your like potion, potion usage and such in your setting so you don't waste potions. Note that in a duel, there's a time limit displayed in the upper right-hand corner. Potions may only be used during the first 30 seconds of the duel. Once it hits 2.30, it will automatically turn off potion usage. So it's best to try to time it so you're chugging something right before then. This one looks like it'll be whether somebody gets a lucky critical. And we win. Do that three times, and you will have three red crystals and five more points. Now we're at 130 points, and things get a little trickier. I'm going to start with what I think are the quickest and always available methods of getting the next batch of points, but then we'll discuss all the others. Re-enchanting. Go to the character menu. Go to the forge. Third button down is enchant. Fourth is re-enchant. On each piece of gear, you have a number of enchantments. You may hear them as affixes from other games, which may or may not be helpful to you. So you can look around and find one that does nothing for you. For example, I'm a mage, so something that's like melee hit or melee attack is not very useful for me. Here we are. Melee accuracy. I don't need that. So down here, I'm going to click on the change button. This will cost 10 rubies, but since we're gaining 130 total, we're going to still net 120 even doing this gives us a warning, we say yes, and I get fire resist, which is not as wonderful as I would like, but still useful. This maximum number will go up as your gear increases, so don't feel the need to invest much rubies into re-enchanting your gear until you have your really high-end stuff. Having done that, we get 25 blue crystals and 10 points. Next, feeding our mount. In the character menu, let's go to companions. In mounts, we pick one and we press feed. We need to feed our mount three times. So if you're conserving your food to be able to do this every day, instead of just automatically hitting the level up, come down and hit the feed button. One, two, three times. You can get mount food from the treasure mine, as well as from quests, as well as from certain lucky boxes. If you don't have any of those, you can buy mount food from any storekeeper. If we come over here, not the potion merchant, but the storekeeper. We see that she down here has mount food for 15,000 gold apiece. In dailies, we see that feeding our mount gets us five points and one mount food, which we could save for tomorrow if we were running that low. So it only costs you 30,000 gold net per day at worst if you don't have any from quests or other sources. Next, into the character menu, we're going to go to the rune altar and craft a rune. Cost will vary depending on what you have. You don't need to socket it, you don't need to upgrade it, you just have to successfully craft a single room. Sometimes you will be unlucky and get gold instead. There, we crafted a frost resist room. Three gold seed packets for our farm and five points. Which brings us to our hundred rubies. So that's one way to do it. Let's talk about all the other daily quests that there are. First, we're going to start with some that are expensive or might not always be available. You might not have the materials for them. If we go into our character menu, if we go back to companions, we can go to our guardian and awaken our guardian. This cost goes up every time you do it. So if you're trying to push out your dailies, 
save it to do once a day or on days when you're too busy to do some of the others. Note that finishing does not count for the quest. When the Guardian awakens and you actually get the stat increases, if you've waited till the next day, it will not clear off tomorrow's quest. I tried. But that does get us 10,000 gold, which helps with the expenditure we put into it, and five points. Back in the character menu again, in Mastery, we can activate a Zodiac Star. This costs an increasing amount of gold, so same as the Guardian, you might want to save it for some days and certainly do no more than one a day. And we'll have gotten 9% increased MP in this case. 10,000 gold and five points. Upgrade an avatar. In your avatar list, that was the avatar button that's up at the top here next to events in the shop. If you have collected avatars from the raid boss or the marauder that you get through questing, then you will be able to upgrade it if you can afford it. This is another thing I would only do once a day as it gets progressively more expensive. But it will add more and more stats to your character and gives you 10,000 gold and five points. Crafting a piece of gear. Early on, this one's easy because you'll be continually collecting designs from the elite dungeons. But later on, as you're having trouble filling out your sets and moving more slowly, you may not be able to get this one every day. We go to our crafting menu. We go down to crafting. Here are all the different gear sets. If you really need to pull this one off, you might save a chaos set from a quick elite temple run or some of the designs just to be able to use a minimum amount of materials to fulfill this daily. But you pick any piece of gear that you have the recommended or required materials for and hit craft. It'll warn you to extract any gems you have socketed. You'll have the option to protect it to uh, keep your refinement level, which might cost rubies. And you hit craft. Probably you want to equip that right away if it's a new piece. 30 blue crystals and 10 points. Now we've almost run through all of the quests that there are. What we have left are in dungeons. There's clear hell dungeons, but we can't even attempt a hell dungeon until level 50. So since I'm only 42, I can't demonstrate that right now. Similarly, in adventure, you will find join a battleground. Battlegrounds are not available until level 49. You can find them in the events under all events. And down here is the battleground. If we try to enter, it'll tell us you must reach level 49, and they're at certain times of day. Finally, we have the requirement to win a world boss chest. World bosses are not available until level 40, but you can find the world bosses under activities. This one we haven't looked at yet, the world boss. World bosses spawn after a certain amount of time of being dead. The only one you'll want to worry about at level 40 and around there is Kogmanen. He spawns every two hours in the Kalad Dryland, which you can find by going to the map, into the area or world map if you weren't already in Kalad, and scroll down. to Kalad Drylands. When a world boss is available, everybody joins in, and you will often see it announced in the world chat down at the bottom. To get a world boss chest and fulfill the quest, you have to be near him when he dies and have hit him. Especially when world bosses are first available, Cogmanon will probably kill you. 
If you don't want to use a whole bunch of Resurrection Guardian Angels, then just stay dead for most of the fight. And Resurrect when he's nearly dead, run in, get your hit. That covers all of the dailies that can be available. If you run through every day, you can get 130 rubies, possibly minus the 10 if you spent them re-enchanting, plus three from your dueling. All told, there are 205 points worth of dailies, and you need 150 to get your rubies. So if you want to approach it from the other side, you can ask yourself, what 55 points of dailies do I not want to do today? I hope this is helpful in getting you as much premium currency as you need. Have fun playing Arcane Online, and if you have any questions or any of your own tips or tricks for completing these quests, please put them in the comments. Thank you.